poison which he had um, to use for himself um, were given to him from one of Himmler's uh, staff and he mistrusted that it may affect perhaps uh, Himmler tried a dirty trick and and uh, gave him something like what only make him unconsciousness unconscious so that um, he could be transported against his will out of the bunker and uh, delivered to the enemy and to to test this he um, ordered um, a doctor to try to test this uh, poison ca uh, capsule um, at the dog so he said farewell to this Creature, I think it was next Eva Brown, this one who stood next to him, and Blondie died very promptly. A tiny handful of German anti-Nazis, the Russians came as liberators. On Tuesday morning, 24th in the morning, we suddenly saw the, the Gestapo had disappeared. During the night, the whole prison was given over to normal, normal prison guards, old men, loved nice men. And when we saw that, the many of the uniforms, the, 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 the Gestapo guards, had, had, had um, put away there. Uh, we said, now when the Russians take over, you are the man who will be killed, not me, not we. Let us out. They were very, uh, they said, no, we can't do that. Tonight, the Gestapo will come back. And then we made, uh, in the afternoon of Tuesday, we made, uh, made an agreement with them and said, look, we will, uh, we will put out ourselves, we the prisoners, some guards on the roof and observe the uh, coming near of the, of the Russian front. And in the minute we hear uh, Russian gunfire, not only the artillery, shelling, then you let us out. They said, all right. When the door was opened at the prison, there was with us a Jewish Russian doctor who was in concentration, inmate of Sachsenhausen, the, the famous. And he, I don't know by what reason, was a month ago was brought by the Gestapo to our prison to do the d most dirty jobs in the prison all the time. And uh, we couldn't contact him much, but we knew him, of course, then he stood there on the street and where to go as a Russian. And I said, look, come with us. My, my mother-in-law will feed you. You can come in our basement. And he went with me. When the first units of the Russians came two days later, he meet them on the door, addressing them in Russia. He are all, he are all anti-fascists in this, in this basement. When the Russian came in in the end, we found, at least we found the first lot, the fighting troops which came in. They took away our watches, of course, and they were very cautious, and we could understand that. They took away things they liked, but they behaved very businesslike. They stayed in this house here, and they lived in this room, three or four of them, quite high officers, and they got up in the morning at eight o'clock, and then at nine o'clock they went out to the tear garden, which isn't very far from here, and behind the tear garden is or was the chancery where Hitler was still alive and fighting. They went out and did their job and came back five o'clock in the afternoon shop and then they asked me down here to play the piano and uh, give them a little tune and then we drank together and we sang together suddenly we saw the first russian soldiers they knocked at our door came in and uh, were very kind said to my uh, mother and to me if uh, there were German soldiers in the house or asked for weapons. And then they left. But uh, the next Russians were quite different. Um, one of them raped me and 
other inhabitants of the house. These two women who were living next door, they were killed and we weren't able to bury them because the shelling was still going on. When the Russians came along and they asked us, where are your women? We want to have your women. Frau, 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 they said in German, or they call German. So uh, I had the trick, or I found the trick, to take them to these two dead bodies. I opened the carpet and said, this is my Frau here. I can't supply you with any women. These are the only two women we we knew here, which we had. And the Russians kneeled down some of them and made the cross and said little prayers, which was very astounding, and got up again and kissed me because they thought I was the widower, <laughs> and uh, gave me presents, gave me cigarettes, gave me bread, clapped my money on my shoulder, and went off again and got what they wanted, probably the next house or in the next street. Every night time I used to go home to see my mother and have get something to eat and some cigarettes and so because we didn't get any food at daytime and uh, uh, my mother was was every time every night she was very lucky to see me again naturally and uh, so my mother asked me and also other people from from our house they asked me just take your uniform out stay here and and don't go back to to fighting and and Always I said, no, I, I can't do it. I, I couldn't stay at home safe, you know, and they are still fighting. Zhukov called the Battle of Berlin one of the most difficult battles of the war. It cost the Russians over 100,000 men. Total German losses are unknown. Продолжается штурм Берлина. The storming of Berlin continued. The encircling ring round the whole city and round the center of Berlin itself was being drawn tighter and tighter. Only a few hundred yards had separated us from the viper's nest of Hitler's headquarters, the Imperial Chancellery. Then he began my uh, last will. And he, then he dictated me at first his private will and afterwards his um, political testimony. And uh, I must confess that I was, I was at first in a very excited uh, mood because I expected that I would be the first and the only one who knows, who will, he is going to know the explanation and the declaration why the war had come to this end. And why, um, why Hitler couldn't stop, and why, why the development, and why the, the catastrophe? The, I, I, I thought, now I will, I will come to the moment of the truth. And I was heart bumping when I wrote down what Hitler said. But he used nothing new. He he came out with this um, old phrases, he repeated his accusations, his, um, his uh, revenge swearing to the enemy and to the Jewish uh, uh, capitalistic system, and, and then he, he announced in the, in the uh, second part of the history of the political testament, he announced a new government. Eva Braun hatte es bis dahin fertig gebracht, 
Eva Braun had by now persuaded the Führer to the point where he actually wanted to improvise a married service to her. Hochzeit improvisieren wolle. Man holte zu diesem Zweck To do this, they got an official from the Propaganda Ministry aus dem Propaganda Ministerium, der als Standes who would fulfill the function of registrar. I joined the other Sunsi's uh, little uh, uh, Wirkung from, of Hitler, and the, they, are sit, they were sitting there around the table, and so I had to, to congratulate Eva Braun, and I, 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 did, I was a little, um, a little shy what to say, and, and I, I, I shake hand to her, and she said, oh, you can say Mrs. Hitler to me now, and I did.